Our program includes three masterworks, each with its own beauty and creative demands on a musicians and a conductor. You will hear from a few of our musicians who will share their insights and observations, telling you about their special roles in our performance of these powerful compositions. I hope that you will enjoy this wonderful program. On this weekend's concert, um, I play in both the William Tell Overture and Ein Heldenleben. And one of the things which is very interesting to me is that essentially I'm playing the same solo in both pieces. I play the part of a shepherd. In William Tell, I'm in the calm after the storm when the flute and I call back and forth to each other. And at the end of Heldenleben, I guess you could say that's after a storm as well, although a different kind of storm, I guess maybe an ego storm would be a good way to put it. Both of these solos use the same kind of melody, uh, big leaps, and uh, th they sound almost like someone yodeling. Probably many of us associate this music with the Lone Ranger and his sidekick Tonto. I love that TV show and as a kid I was permitted to watch the TV show after I had finished my practicing. The piece begins with a beautiful slow section played by five solo cellos and the bass section. Uh, for me, starting this piece is a bit like hang gliding. You're standing on the mountain ledge all alone. Your heart is beating. You're waiting for the right moment to begin. You take a deep breath, then you take a running start, and then there's no turning back. You're over the edge. And that arpeggio happens three or four times. The fourth time, it's really difficult. It ends on one of the very highest note that the cello can play. Scary. <laughs> Haydn Symphony number 93, the first of Haydn's 12 London symphonies, was uh, written in 1791. Uh, this piece is uh, typical of a classical uh, period symphony, um, is a forward movement work, has doubles of all the winds, and it also has uh, two trumpets, which uh, you'll see me play uh, in the back, and it also has a timpani part. Uh, the one thing to keep your ears open in this piece for is a very uh, typically funny um, hide-in moment in the second movement um, where there is a uh, extra special bassoon solo. So keep your ears open for that. Franz Josef Haydn's symphonies, of which there are 104, have a much smaller orchestra. We would almost call it a chamber orchestra. So fewer string players and fewer winds. And therefore, you will hear more exposed parts for the strings and the winds, especially the wind soloists. You will hear them better than maybe you hear them in a larger piece in a larger orchestra. Now you won't be hearing me on the oboe because I'm saving my lips for the second half, for the big piece on the second half, Ein Heldenleben, and we have a wonderful young guest oboist for you today to play the first oboe in the Haydn Symphony. Enjoy! Richard Strauss's Ein Heldenleben features a very large uh, virtuosic violin solo, and this comes in the second part of the tone poem, which is subtitled The Hero's Companion. Now, The Hero's Companion is, in fact, a musical portrait of Richard Strauss's wife, Pauline, and the solo violin plays her. Um, she was quite a character from all descriptions, and Richard Strauss himself uh, said of her, she's very complex, very much a woman, a little depraved, something of a flirt, and never twice alike, every moment different. So it's my challenge as the solo violin to depict her character and her uh, whims 
So uh, Richard Strauss, he writes incredibly detailed um, performance instructions. So hypocritically languorous is here. And then suddenly too funny. As a horn player, uh, we are fortunate enough that Strauss has chosen the horn to be the, the main character in most of his tone poems. Uh, we are Till Spiegel, we are Don Juan, in the case of Ein Heldenleben, we are the hero. It has been a challenge from the point of first seeing the part when I was in college to, to, to even now in preparation for, for these concerts. My teacher, uh, Richard Mack, who played in the Boston Symphony for 34 years, uh, studied with a gentleman by the name of Wilhelm Valkenir, and Valkenir played uh, in the Berlin State Opera in the uh, the teens into the early 20s before he came to the United States in 1921. And he premiered a couple of Strauss operas uh, with Strauss, but the more important thing was that he played cards with Strauss. And uh, Strauss was uh, quite particular about his rehearsal technique and concert uh, techniques, which was conduct everything fast so he could go play a card game. So I look at it the kind of uh, just a couple generations removed here that my teacher's teacher played and worked with Strauss and more importantly played cards with Strauss.